Hi everyone. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, having a workflow run on a particular SharePoint list item. And then as it runs, it's logging a whole bunch of stuff to the workflow history. Now one of the last things we want to do is actually copy that item to an archive list and maybe delete that original item. What we're going to focus on today is the copying of the item across to the archive list and then also copying over the workflow history as well. Right? Not the easiest thing to do, but hopefully we've made it very simple for you to be able to do something like that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this list here. It's called source, and we're going to create an item in here. We'll go through the details of the workflow in a moment, but let's create the item, and then we're going to manually kick off this workflow. Now, this workflow has a task in it. You can see here the Flexi task. So we are going to have to go and complete that task first before the workflow can proceed. Now that the workflow has started, you can see it's in progress. So let's click in there to get to the workflow history. Here's our task. We're going to pop into here and we'll complete that task and just log some, some messages. Let's do that. OK, and OK. That completes the task. And then we'll take a look at the workflow history. So you can see we have a few things that has have been logged so far. Test message, test message two, the person who responds to the task and their comments, and also a, a message that says cool, approved. Now it, it does say in progress, but if we refresh this, it's now completed. So now let's go to the archive list. Now before we create an item called test 18, there's no test 18 here, so let's refresh this. And there's our test 18. We have a workflow on here that actually went and grabbed that workflow history and logged it. So let's click on completed. And we'll see there are our messages, test message, test message two, the comments from the task and the call approved. So everything moved across very nicely and it very quick. So let's have a look at how we did this. So let's jump into this workflow here. This is our source workflow. So this is the workflow that runs on that uh, initial source item. We have our log actions. Those were the ones that logged that test message and test message two in the next one. We have our flexi task action and it's logging some information depending on whether it's rejected or approved. Yeah, this is where we have the actual copying. We have a copy item. So this is copying the current item to that archive folder archive list. Because that action doesn't give us an ID back, we are doing a query list. Now, because we have a rule that says in that archive list, the title field needs to be unique, we are actually filtering on the title. So we're actually saying query that archive list, find me an item that has a title equal to the current items title, and then store the ID. So that's how we're getting the actual ID of that destination or that archived item. Now, finally, we have these two actions. We have a build string action. Take a quick look at this. This is just putting together a little bit of XML with the current list name, the current item ID, and what is the workflow that's uh, currently running, right? Because we're interested in getting the workflow history from the current workflow. You could potentially use other workflow instances as well, but this is the current uh, workflow instance we're interested in. So putting that together, this is the structure that's required. Data is just letting it know this is the data we're going to pass uh, to another workflow. And then all the variable names that we're actually filling in, their start variable names. We'll talk about that in a moment. And then finally, we have this call web service action. And this action is calling the Nintex workflow web service, passing in some credentials. We're calling a web method called start workflow on this item. So that will actually start a workflow on that uh, new item. And then you can see we have this information. We have the item ID. That is the new item that was created by that copy item action. The destination list that we're trying to start a workflow on is called archive. And this is the workflow that we created on that destination list. Again, I'll talk about that in a moment. And we're passing in the information that we built up in that build string action. So we know that when we run a workflow on the archive list, the actual source item, we have all the information for the item ID, the source list, and the workflow name. Okay, that's all we're doing here. We're not doing any checking to see if it works or anything like that. We're just gonna assume in this case that it will work. Now, if I jump to the 
archive list here, we have, you'll notice, a workflow that ran when that item was created. It's called get source item workflow history workflow. Nice, nice naming convention there. Okay, so let's actually take a look at what this workflow is. That is it. Very easy. It's a user defined action. We have some variables, and you'll notice the names source list name, source item ID, and source workflow name. All of them are shown on the start form, which basically makes them start variables, and that's what we used. All these names are what we used in this workflow here in this build string action. Right, what that means is that we're actually parts, trying to start this particular workflow and we're passing in these variables or these values. Okay, now those are used in this user defined action. And the reason why I made this into a user defined action is because it's fairly generic uh, workflow logic and that can be used uh, for other. Uh, other workflows as well. So I didn't want to limit it to one specific workflow. I want this user defined action to be reusable. And you can see we're passing in all the information we received into some input parameters for this user defined action. So let's have a look at what the user defined action does because that's really what the core of this is. Now, here it is here, not very complicated. There's four actions. We have a core web service action. This action again is calling the new text workflow web service because there is a web method there called get workflow history for list item. And in the SOAP packet, we're passing in all the information that we need uh, so that it knows what workflow history to get. In this case, we have the source item ID, the source list name, and the workflow name. Right? So we're going to actually, so this, this action here will actually call back to this item here the last one we created, test 18, and it will get uh, all the information for this source workflow uh, and all the workflow history, and it's gonna bring that back. Now, it comes back as a bunch of XML. This is the XML that it looks like. You can see it says workflow log and activities, and you'll see under, let's actually scroll down a little bit, under workflow history, there are these uh, elements, Again, scroll down a little bit, and this is the new text workflow history. And there's a description node. And you see there's test message. The next one should be uh, the system account message and all that sort of stuff. So you can see all that information uh, is in here. So that's what we're going to get back. And we're going to store that in a variable, in a test WS, which is web service result. And then we're going to use this query XML action to query that data and pull out all those messages. Now you see the XPath expression here. It's not very pretty. I'll post that into the blog post, but uh, this is what you need to be able to pull that data out of that XML from the web service call. We're storing all these values because they're going to potentially have multiple uh, messages in the workflow history in a collection variable called collection of workflow history messages. Now the rest pretty straightforward. Once we have that collection, we're going to use a for each action to iterate through each of those values. There's my collection. We have a variable called text workflow history message. So we're going to iterate through that collection. And as we go through that, through each message, we're going to use a log action to log it. So you can see not very complicated, but at the same time, we do have two workflows and a user defined action that's running. So uh, you can imagine it's a little bit complicated, but not, not too bad. So like, like I said, this particular user-defined action, it doesn't have to be for the current item. You can actually customize this any way you want. So you could actually pull out other items, uh, other workflows, all that sort of stuff. If potentially you have on the source list multiple workflows running, you could actually have multiple workflows start, or you could actually be smart enough to pass in not just one workflow name into here, but multiple workflow names. And then you'd have to just slightly tweak the, the workflow at the destination to break all those workflow names up into a collection and then put this user-defined action into a loop right, or a for each, iterate through all, all those workflow names and then get the workflow history and log all that uh, to the current item. So this is a very flexible user-defined action, which is why I put all that into a UDA, not just into the uh, workflow itself. Um, 
so it's very usable. Hopefully this is something that uh, you might find handy in any of your future projects. If you have any comments, questions or suggestions, please add them to the comment section at the bottom of this post. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video.